Do you have a cell phone I could use? Why? Someone's got to call Khan and let him know one of his angels is missing. When you're looking for love, you need the words to be right. Sometimes, though, they're more hilarious than heartfelt. Suck me, beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 quirky movie pickup lines. No, I don't want to go to a party in your pants. Very well. Ian, would you like to go to a party in my pants? For this list, we've looked at all movie pickup lines, but have only selected the funniest, most cheesy, or most ridiculous. I want to go out with you! All right, all right, we'll go out. They can be successful or unsuccessful, as long as they get us laughing and are not used on wives or exes. Number 10, predicting the future, Hitch. What's her drink? Usually beer. Tonight, Grey Goose Martini, dirty. In our first scene, Hitch's girl is almost hijacked, but thankfully, the guy's about as smooth as sandpaper. Hi. I noticed your glass was getting a little low, so I took the liberty of bringing you another apple martini. With this opening line, he comes on strong, but the rest of his pitch is decidedly weak. And I couldn't help but notice you look a lot like my next girlfriend. Made all the more cringeworthy by Will Smith's close proximity, this is an effort that was doomed from the start. And when it's followed up by Smith's ultra-professional pickup, it just seems all the more pathetic. Now, on the one hand, it is very difficult for a man to even speak to someone that looks like you. But on the other hand, should that be your problem? We couldn't help but notice that he looked like a fool. Nice to meet you, Chip. You too. Number nine. Super stalker, Van Wilder. What I think I'll walk from here. Blonde bombshell Tara Reid is on the receiving end of our next cheeky chat-up line, delivered by Ryan Reynolds with aplomb. I'm avoiding graduation because I'm scared. This movie is rife with teenage libido, and Van Wilder is the supremely confident big man on campus. He's been there for seven years, and he's a legendary lover. And it's classic quips like this that have earned him his sexy status. It's cheesy, yes, but in a cute way. Are you stalking me? Because that would be super. If she wasn't stalking him, she will be now. You gotta let your heart lead you. Even if you know it's someplace, you know you're not supposed to be. How often does your heart lead you into the women's locker room? This would be a first. How about you? Number eight. The look in your eye, Scarface. What? You want me to dance? Yeah, sure, go on, Tony, you dance. Go on. Okay. Have some fun. At number eight, we get angry, but there's plenty of sexual tension as well. What's your name? As I will what? Hancock. You sound like a bird. Hancock. Elvira is dancing, and not surprisingly, she's caught the eye of Tony Montana. I'm just trying to be friendly, you know? He tries the small talk, but is rebuffed with racial stereotypes. Offended but determined, Montana heads straight for the sweet spot. You're good looking, but you've got a beautiful body, beautiful legs, a beautiful face, but all these guys in love with you, man. All he's got a look in your eye like you haven't been in a year. Exactly how much sex Elvira's had is really immaterial. Montana has finally gotten a rise from her. Don't call me baby. I'm not your baby. She's not his baby, but she will be soon. What a lucky guy. You see that girl over there? Number seven, Milk, Napoleon Dynamite. She's pretty good looking. Do you dare me to go talk to her? The school cafeteria isn't most people's first choice of hunting ground, but then Napoleon Dynamite isn't most people's first choice of sexual predator. This pickup's laid down with such nonchalance that it's easy to miss it altogether, especially when we're all looking at the piece of sandwich stuck to this girl's top lip. I see you're drinking 1%. Is that because you think you're fat? Because you're not. You could be drinking whole if you wanted to but she's in need of a napkin and in need of a nerd. I have all your equipment in my locker. Should probably come get it because I can't fit my nunchucks in there anymore. Enter Napoleon and his unconventional compliments. Hey, can I have one of your keychains? Being murdered in cold blood is not nonsense. Why don't you try it sometime? Number six, a pickup with bite, charade. Would you mind seeing me to the door? Of course not. It's a good place for making friends. Pretty much anything Audrey Hepburn could have said to any generation would have set hearts aflutter. 
But in this scene, she has us to attention with a snap. Look, I know it's asking you to stretch your imagination, but don't you think you could pretend just for a moment that I'm a woman? Cary Grant wants cooperation, but this was not what he had in mind. The elevator is cramped, and the temperatures rise with it. I don't bite, you know, unless it's called for. The whole scene is a struggle for control, a struggle that Hepburn undoubtedly wins. Walking a lady home has never been quite so hot under the collar. Do you know what's wrong with you? No, what? Nothing. Can I show you something? If you're feeling sad and lonely, Number five, Shagadelic, Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery. One who loves you only. I can be so warm. For Austin Powers, quirky pickup lines are a way of life. It's difficult to choose just one. Do I make you horny? Randy? Do I make you horny, baby? Yeah, do I? Of course he makes us horny, but this now or later opening gambit with Liz Hurley is what really sums him up. Mr. Powers, my job is to acclimatize you to the 90s. Having been cryogenically frozen, he hasn't had any action to speak of since the 1960s, and he's eager to make up for lost time. You're sleeping on the sofa, Mr. Powers. Hurley sizzles as his straight-edge sidekick, so much so that Austin's audacity is almost understandable. Shall we shag now or shall we shag later? How do you like to do it? Do you like to wash up first, you know? Personally, before I'm on the job, I like to give my undercarriage a bit of a how's your father. Could you send up some champagne and strawberries, please? Of course. Number four, sure thing, pretty woman. You know what's happened? I've got a runner in my pantyhose. I'm not wearing pantyhose. He's a wealthy businessman. She's a lowly call girl. Their paths perhaps expectedly cross, but not in the way that we thought. You know, you could pay me. That's one way to maybe break the ice. Oh. The beginning of their relationship is perfectly summed up by this Julia Roberts remark to Richard Gere. Do you have a wife? <laughs> Girlfriend? Have both. If he's after a good time, then he doesn't need to try especially hard. I appreciate this whole seduction scene you've got going, but let me give you a tip. I'm a sure thing. Gere's a good guy, though, and he's not about to use Vivian like men have before him. Sure thing or not. Let's get your things Look, and your money and please leave. I don't do drugs, all right? I, I stopped doing drugs when I was what 14. Is what is this? I had all those strawberry seeds. And you should neglect your gums. Number three. Politics makes strange bedfellows the sure thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You would think that was funny. A film that set the tone for the teen comedies of the future, The Sure Thing follows Gibb on his road trip quest to lose his virginity. We speak each other's unspoken language fluently. Gibb. And with one-liners like these, it could have been a very, very long journey. Taking inspiration from the night sky, the randy teenager somehow compares his non-existent sexual performance to astrophysics and global affairs. Some thought was actually given to the notion of sending up a man and a woman together. Really? Mm -hmm. Cosmic Adam and Eve, if you will. It's inexplicable and unforgettable. How would you like to have a sexual encounter so intense it could conceivably change your political views? Gibb sure goes hard, but ultimately he goes home alone. Would you like to dance? Yes, please. Every time. Consider outer space. What? John? Yeah. I gotta see you right away, it's important. Number two, given at 10%, wedding crashers. We got three really big weeks ahead of us. It's wedding season, kid. You sandbagging son of a bitch. They're legendary wingmen. And weddings are their playground. Where Vince Vaughn plays loud and proud, Owen Wilson plays shy and emotional. And it's perfectly demonstrated with our silver medal scene. No, it was not a very pretty scene. But he has pulled himself. There's no better way to a woman's heart than, well, through her heart. You were crying. Oh, shit, you weren't supposed to see that now. You probably think I'm a big pussy. Wilson knows it, and that's right where he's heading. He wants to be the intelligent choice. He wants the girl to want his sensitivity. Even we want the girl to want him. You know how they say we only use 10% of our brains? I think we only use 10% of our hearts. It's cheesy, but it works. Before we get seduced by our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh, you're prettier than I am. 
<laughs> what are you doing here? Looking for shells? No, I'm just looking. And he's crazy about me. As yes, he should be. So you glide. I glide? You glide. It's a very attractive quality. Most girls, they merely plot along. You, on the other hand, you glide. Let's go somewhere where we can be alone. Ah, there doesn't seem to be anyone on this couch. What do you say we go out on a date? Have some chicken, maybe some sex. You know, see what happens. Number one, big deal, Anchorman, the legend of Ron Burgundy. I've got a big story for you. Mm -hmm. And it's right here. Well, hello. <laughs> Pointed to your boobies. <laughs> to even think about dropping a pickup line in the first place, you've got to be a pretty confident guy. Ron Burgundy is clearly that. He spots his lucky lady from across the party and proceeds to charm the living daylights out of her. You have an absolutely breathtaking hiney. The entire scene is car crash comedy, as Burgundy relies on his own arrogance to get through. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Big deal or not, he won't be on her anytime soon. I want to be on you. But he will be on our podium. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I... It's the quirkiest, stupidest, most ineffective pickup line out there. I want to be on you. Do you agree with our list? I can't help it. It's fantastic. Which hilarious hookup did we miss? Give me some sugar, baby. For more Love Drunk Top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave.